Hello everyone, Simon here, and welcome back to the architecture of Hitman World of Assassination. Today we are in Bangkok, Thailand. Ba ba is it Bangkok? It's probably Bangkok. Bangkok, Thailand. Right in front of us we have a big Buddhist temple. It's really distinctive, isn't it? Do you recognize that one? Maybe you do. We are also on a river. And then on one side, we have a modern city there. Look at that one. Nice. And then on the other side, we have a whole lot of jungle. Interesting. So where exactly are we? Let's look at the map. Google Maps. This is uh, China, Japan, Australia, Africa, India. Thailand is here in Southeast Asia. Let's go ahead and zoom in to Thailand. And then we zoom in again to Bangkok. And there is Bangkok. If we continue to zoom in. Zoom in, zoom in. So uh, the center of Bangkok is there, right? Zoom in, zoom in. Zoom in, zoom in. What a rune? What is what a rune? This building here? Oh, what could that be? Does that look familiar? What a rune is that? The Temple of Dawn. Ah, oh, look at that thing. Isn't that impressive? So that is the Buddhist temple across the river from where we are standing right now. Look at this thing at night. Ah, oh, it's magnificent. So this thing is a famous landmark in, ba in Bangkok. Uh, if you're gonna go to Bangkok, you have to visit and take a look at this thing, because it is magnificent. Now, the thing is, if you look out a little bit, let me zoom out, we are in the middle of the city, right? According to the game, there's a city over here somewhere in the distance, I guess maybe there, and then there's a bit of jungle there in the distance, but there's no jungle here. And there's no jungle there, and also across the river from Watarun, there's no hotel, right? Well, there's Arun Riverside. It's kind of a hotel. It's not the kind of hotel that we're looking at, though. I wonder if there's a way to see this. Mm, never mind. So... The place in the game is completely fictional because that's not right. That that's that there's a city back there. There's a whole lot of city back there. And there's a whole lot of city around there as well. So this is a completely fictional place. But they did put the landmark there to um, suggest that we are in the middle of Bangkok, even though we're not. Alright, so let's get on to the actual level. Let's go a game level. Uh sneaking back there is the hotel. Respect. We'll get close to it. In front of it, we have this pavilion. Look at this. Just in case you are not sure whether or not you're in Thailand, this pavilion tells you that you are in Thailand. Because look at this. Look at these carvings. Look at this gilding. Hey, look at these patterns. Look at this architecture. It's very, very Thailand. <laughs> there are very few things more Thailand than this. <laughs> Alright, so just in case you don't know, you are in Thailand. And then, I guess you might be confused for a moment, because if you look beyond the pavilion, there's this European-looking building over here. What's going on? Uh, this appears to be built in a, a colonial style, perhaps a French colonial style. Which is odd, because Thailand out of all the countries in the Southeast Asia, Thailand is the only one that was never actually colonized. It was never actually colonized. They managed to resist colonialism and maintain their independence. Isn't that interesting? So then what is this? Like why, why would this be in Thailand? I mean, I guess you don't have to be colonized to build a European building. It's possible that some European came and built a hotel here, maybe to serve Westerners, without colonizing the place. I mean, that's, that'd be nice if you 
do business without colonizing people. It's unusual though, right? <laughs> but it's nice. Uh, or perhaps a local person decided to build a hotel in the Western style to serve Western clients as a way to make money, you know, from, from Western visitors. That's also possible. Nothing wrong with that. So uh, a lot of things could be possible. Uh, since this is a completely fictional building, we don't really know what's happening here. In any case, there is a European colonial style building in Thailand. And uh, I guess we should just take a quick look at the facade before we go up to it. It's, um... I mean, obviously there's the columns and the pediments and the cornices, and so it's kind of this classical thing. But there are little flourishes that hint at a Baroque flavor. So Baroque is basically classical architecture, but fancier, right? <laughs> classical architecture, but more playful, I guess you would say. And why would, I, why would I say Baroque flavor? If we walk up to it a little bit, get a closer look. So there are like certain details that a little bit, uh, I guess you could say excessive. For example, you see there, underneath the window, there's like a lintel sort of a thing, right? And under that, there's these little scrolls holding up. You don't need those scrolls. Like those little scrolls, there's like a little flourish that wouldn't be in more restrained and more disciplined classical architecture. So this kind of playfulness, like adding a little bit of, bit of decoration. And then this down here, you see that? So you have like a stone arch, right? But then the middle piece of the arch, the keystone, it's dropped. Like the keystone is a bit bigger, just to highlight the keystone. So the dropped keystone, that's a little bit excessive, right? There's a little bit of a, a, a flourish that doesn't need, it doesn't need to be there. But you put there just to like highlight the, that bit of architecture. And then that column there, so so this is the column, or, or a pilaster, I guess. A pilaster is a column that's also part of the wall. So this pilaster is pretty basic, right? You have, like, the base, and then the column, and then the capital. And then this thing, you have a column, a thin column, layered on top of a thicker column beneath. So you have, like, a, a base, and then a bigger base, and then a column, and a bigger column. And then the capital, and then more capital. So the capital is, there's a, instead of just like, you know, a square capital, you have like a capital square, goes back, and then goes out again, and then goes back. So that little bit of flourish is kind of like, what's going on there? Like, why did you do that? <laughs> so there's like a little bit of Baroque things, just kind of little details, little extra details, that make the architecture just a little bit more interesting, is what I'm talking about. Like, you know, like full-blown Baroque can be like wild, like, it, like bits and pieces can stick out everywhere. So this is very subtle, but you can see that they're doing a little bit just to highlight to make things a little bit more interesting. So that's the style of this architecture. Uh, there's not too much to say beyond that though, because as you'll see, it's just basically the same thing, copy and paste all around. And as we walk around the building, you'll see it's just the same thing, copy and paste. So I mean, it's, it's interesting. There's ornamentation, there's detailing, but it's the same detailing over and over and over again. So on the one hand it's fancy, on the other hand it's not that interesting, somehow. Somehow it's simultaneously fancy, but also not very interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, like, you, if you've seen one module, you've seen the whole thing. <laughs> oh, uh, beyond that, I guess the roof is kind of hard to see from down here, isn't it? On the roof, there's little tie elements. So little details, so those things. So those are a bit of a local flavor on the roof there. So this got this a little mixture of like European colonial architecture and local architecture in the roof. So uh, this kind of fusion between different styles. That's kind of interesting, right? I mean, it's not, there's not too much of it, but it's, it's a little bit there worth uh, remarking. Alright, so that's the facade of the building. Let's walk around a little bit. We are on the riverside, and the riverside starts down here. We have terraces down here. The guests arrive by boat. Fancy. Uh, 
And the dogs go all the way around. Don't need to walk all the way around. We have terrace and terrace. Two layers. And we have some of these guests lounging around, sitting around. So you might notice that uh, all the guests are white dudes. Look at that. White dudes and white ladies. And then all the servants, I think, are Thai. Yeah, no, all the servants are Thai. Or all the, uh, the staff. <laughs> it's not called of servants. All the staff are Thai. <laughs> Look at them. So he's a, he's a local. And, like, the guest is a white dude. Excuse and the staff me, is, is a local. Ah, there's a certain, like, colonial flavor to this, isn't it? You know, you're being served by the Asians, you're the colonial masters coming to Asia and being served by Asians while you relax on the terrace. Uh, the colonial flavor. Interesting. Keep that in mind. Right, and then you have black bodyguards. Oh man, the racism. <laughs> The absolute racism. So the black bodyguards, they're the muscle. Hell the white yeah. dudes are relaxing on the on the terrace. And then the Asians are serving. Oh man, the, the absolute racism. <laughs> but keep that in mind. We're gonna subvert this. Don't don't just don't get too That's mad right away. Bodyguard. Alright, so we get up to the top terrace. We have a bit of a bar here. Nice. I guess there's a sort of a bar slash cafe on this side of the terrace. Look at the detailing. Look at, that. Look at those carvings. Interesting carvings. And then, like, look at the bar. Look at the, uh, that little detail there. That slight, slight Asian flavor in, in that little detail there. And then if we come this way... Like the furniture has a slight, oh, hey, if you'll come back in two minutes, we'll be on our way. slight Asian flavor to the chairs and the partitions, and then this like uh, the service building. Oh, look at look at the little column, the top of that column there. Oh, look at that slight motifs, Oriental motifs. <laughs> Don't use the or the word Oriental lightly, by the way. The word Oriental has connotations of racism. Just be careful how you use it. I'm using it deliberately. <laughs> oh, like the, the lights? So the lights, it's got this kind of tatami mat pattern on it, right? Which is oriental. <laughs> but it's modern, like it's a, it's, a, it's a rectangle. So like the shape is modern. So it's like a modern Asian sort of a thing. It's not historic Asian. It's not even traditional Asian. It's modern Asian. And as you go into the hotel, you see a lot of like basically modernism with slight Asian flavors is the interior of the hotel. We're, we're kind of jumping ahead a little bit. Do I need to look at the shed? I guess I don't. All right, the inside of the shed is as you would expect. Just a bunch of stuff piled up. Let's continue going to the other side of the terrace. Oh, elephants. Uh, elephants are special in Thailand. We have some gardens. And then we have more terrace. Oh, outdoor dining. There's a restaurant back there. So the outdoor dining is kind of attached to the restaurant inside. We'll look at the restaurant in a bit. Let me continue. I'm going to go all the way around, actually. So the terrace continues around this way like this. More outdoor dining. And then another garden shed, I suppose. I mean, look at this, though. Like, the small buildings. The small buildings are Thai. And then the big building is European. Mmm, racism in architecture. Like the big master's house is European, and then the small servant auxiliary structures are Thai. Oh man, dripping with racism. 
colonial masters. Oh yeah, let's hold that. Hold that in. Don't get too mad yet. Just hold that in. <laughs> We're gonna get back to this. <laughs> oh, <it's>, oh. <laughs> All right. So we have a uh, another shed. <laughs> Oh, look at this garden. Hey, look at these plants. We have a tropical garden back here. Very nice. And then we have balconies looking out. Nice view. Uh, the real city of Bangkok doesn't look like this, of course. At least not, you know, not in this location. There are parts of Thailand that does look like this, but you have to get out of the city. As we continue around, oh, nice fountain. Oh, the insects. <laughs> There's a lot of bugs, by the way. But this is a tropical climate. There's a lot of rain, a lot of plants, and a lot of bugs. <laughs> uh, something that you don't have to deal with in the photos is the bugs. When you actually go visit, you, you might be mindful about <laughs> the insects. <laughs> All right, back here. Around the back of the hotel, oh, we have cars. Interesting. So we have a bit, of, a bit of a storage shed. Oh, pineapples. A whole bunch of what is that? Onions, potatoes, onions. A lot of food coming in by truck, I guess, because back here we have a gate and a road. So the road access is at the back of the hotel. Which, I mean, I guess the hotel is obviously needs some road. Well, it could be entirely on an island, I guess. But it does have road access. But do note that the road access is only for service. It's only for cargo and service vehicles, right? This is not a guest entrance. Guests do not come in. This is a back door for sure, right? There's no, there's no fancy entrance. So the guests only come in by boat. And the road access is only for cargo, is basically what's going on. Probably not practical for a real hotel, but for like a fantasy video game hotel. It's kind of romantic, right? Ah, oh, you travel by boat up to the hotel. It's, there's a nice, you know, it's a nice concept. Not practical. Uh, we have a bit of a security room at the back here. I suppose you need security at this entrance. Makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna go back out the same way. And I want to point out there's like stains on the walls, I guess. And not just at the back either. So if you look at the, uh, the architecture... Oh, first of all, the back of the hotel is the same as the front of the hotel. Even though the guests never come to the back, right? So that's interesting. In a lot of real European architecture, you would find that the front is fancier than the back because you only have so much money to spend. And if people aren't going to see the back, you're not going to spend the money on the back. You're going to spend the money on the front. So like a lot of churches, a lot of historic churches, like the front is super fancy, but if you go around the back, it's really plain. And sometimes only the front facade is decorated and nothing else is decorated. Sometimes you have like churches like that and other buildings. So like real European architecture does that sometimes, a lot of times in fact. But this building is the same kind of ornamentation on all sides. Which you might say, what well, you're wasting money on the back then. <laughs> and you are. But also, it kind of implies it's not real European architecture. <laughs> because Europeans don't do this. A lot. Interesting. Something to think about. Alright, running back to the front of the hotel. And we're gonna go in the main entrance. And then start the tour of the inside. Right, once again, looking at the facade, you see the stains there? Hey, good to see you. I guess the stains make sense because, again, tropical climate, a lot of rain. But, um, 
You know, for a fancy hotel, maybe they should just clean it more often, I don't know. Alright, so here's the main entrance. So basically the layout of the hotel is we have a block on one side and a block on the other side and they're basically the same, right? It looks like they copy and paste it and they're mostly copy and paste it. In between the two blocks, we have this structure, which is a glass atrium in between the two buildings. Look at that. Uh, the entrance is a little bit fancy. And then on the inside, we have plants. We have like, like a greenhouse with like an arboretum on the inside. Is that the right word for this? Arboretum? Ah, fancy plants on the inside. And the glass roof. How interesting. Although you will note that these are local plants. So the local plants could grow in the local conditions without being indoors. Uh, it's possible that it's only indoors because there's butterflies and birds in here. Do you see that? So there's birds and butterflies flying around, and maybe that's why they put a glass roof on this. Not for the plants, but to keep the birds inside. The reception is unremarkable, although you kind of see the, the modern... the modern detailing. So there's the... colonial-style architecture on the facades, but once you get into the interior furnishings and even the like the floors and ceilings, it's quite modern, with slight Asian flavor. So you see this back here, there's like a tree motif, but it's basically a kind of abstract and clean lines, and very modern in style. So that's basically the style of the interior, so there's like an interesting mix between like the historic stuff, which presumably this is, and then the modern stuff. Interesting the juxtaposition, right? And then inside here, we have seating areas where you can enjoy the indoor trees. I'm not sure how much you would enjoy this actually, wouldn't it get really hot? I wonder if it's air conditioned in here. Because you have a greenhouse in a tropical climate, wouldn't it get really hot and humid inside? I mean, the point of greenhouses is to create a hot, humid environment to grow tropical plants. Like, that's why greenhouses exist. But it's already hot and humid outside because we're in Thailand. So wouldn't it be even more hot and humid inside here? Not sure how this works, really. Back here we have a bar serving all sorts of drinks. And I guess you can, like, get your drinks and sit around and enjoy the trees. And then... What is that? You see that? You see that? That is a statue of the Buddha. The Buddha statue sits right in the middle of the colonial hotel. Isn't that interesting? The Buddha sits there as though this whole thing is a Buddhist temple. <laughs> right in the middle. So remember what I said about this place being, oh, colonial racism. Maybe it's not. Because... Because the Buddha is in the most important place in the hotel. Maybe, maybe they're pretending to be colonial. Uh, the hotel manager walks around. And I'm hoping to catch her, but I'm not sure exactly where she is right now. She might be somewhere else in the hotel. Ah, uh, oh, there she is. So this is the hotel manager. Let's see who she is. Hey, what's up? Miss Mukjai. The hotel manager is a Thai woman. The hotel manager is a Thai woman. So, maybe it's not colonial oppression. Maybe it's local people putting up this colonial show to serve the customers and make money. Right? Maybe, maybe it's not actually colonial oppression. Interesting. Interesting. Maybe it's all pretend. Who knows? And remember, Thailand was never actually colonized. 
Unlike all the other countries in Southeast Asia, Thailand was never actually colonized. Interesting. Politics in architecture, could you believe it? <laughs> could you, you didn't expect that, did you? Alright, so let's explore the right block of the hotel, all the way from the bottom to the top, and then we'll come back and we'll do the left block. So, at the front, on the right side, we have a restaurant. We have a bar, and then we have a kitchen serving food. Actually, what is this food? Fish, meat, salad, shrimps. Wait, is that raw? Why is there, why is there raw food up top? Shouldn't that? I mean, there's cooked food down there, I guess. And then we have a seating and a kitchen. And remember, out here there was the outdoor seating, so this is attached to the kitchen, basically. Nice security, man. Get to know. Uh, and then on this side, through a cloakroom kind of a space, I suppose, through here is the toilet. Remember in the last... oh, well, let's not... <laughs> he's, he's, let's not walk into him peeing. Remember in the last video? How I... S no, the video before. Was it the video before? Yeah, the video before, I talked about how you don't want the toilet right next to the kitchen because otherwise somebody takes a massive dump and then as soon as they get out of the toilet, you smell the poop in the kitchen. So here, the, there's a toilet and then there's like this space. And then there's the food area, right? So this is extra space, so you don't, you don't hear the toilet. You don't smell the toilet, you don't see the toilet when you're eating. So this is kind of important in a fancy restaurant. You don't want, you don't want people smelling poop when they're eating food. So behind the kitchen here, there is more kitchen. <laughs> it's funny, but actually it makes sense because the kitchen has to serve the entire hotel, right? So imagine like it's dinner time and everybody in the hotel is looking for food. So you need a big ass kitchen to cook for the entire hotel. This kitchen probably only serves the restaurant, whereas this kitchen probably serves the rest of the hotel. So it's it's funny that there's a kitchen behind the kitchen, but actually it makes perfect sense. Over here we have food storage, alright, and then we have more food storage, oh sausages. And then we have more food storage. A lot of food gets eaten in this hotel. Behind here, there's a bit of a service area. Kind of a nothing space. They're using storage. I guess there's more food stored here. Wines and drinks. And then we come over here. This is the chef's office, I think. Is that more food storage? <laughs> oh yeah, no, there's more food storage in the chef's office. And then we're back in the kitchen. Right, so there's a, there's a lot of food. But you know, it's not that surprising. Like, food is kind of important in the, in the hotel. Right? I mean, if the food is bad, people are going to be Would unhappy. You throw on a grenade to save me? Upstairs, we have a mezzanine area with more restaurant seating. This is quite nice. Kind of like... Like this. You know, you kind of away from the crowds, but you can still see them. Oh, and like you see the lighting, and you see the... Uh... Is that a chandelier? Is that really a chandelier? It's not a traditional one. But you see like the, the rectangles, a very modern style in the furnishings. But it's a mix, right? Like the railings there, that's the old uh, Baroque stuff. So, interesting juxtaposition. Some parts are modern and some parts are... are old. Alright, more restaurant. We don't need to see all of this for too long. Behind the restaurant, upstairs, we have, or as I say, a polo lounge. We have a lounge with a bar. If you're done eating and you just want drinks, this is like a cocktail bar, right? Hey, look at all those. It's a lot of lime. Oyster, oh, oyster bar. Interesting. Look at those oysters. 
and then like a a mixer and alcohol. So there's like cocktails and oysters hey, in the Apollo the bar. Uh, Apollo lounge, I mean. And then here we have Meadow Brown Lounge, right? Another lounge, another bar, more alcohol, more cocktails. How many bars and how many cocktails do you need? He's cutting that line. And then we have a room back here. I guess if you want some private lounging, more lounge. Right, let's go upstairs. So on the third level, we have the hotel rooms. Oh, also look at these panels, right? Kind of modern. The funny angles. Juxtaposed against like the old ornamentation. And then the roof is kind of modern. You have like the strip lighting. That's very modern. And then you have like this lighting, which is like the old style. <laughs> it's kind of... Ah, makes a match. Very interesting. Anyway, let's get inside one of these rooms. Take a look around. So the rooms look like this. Ah, fancy chandeliers. We have like a, a lounge area. I don't know if you call this a dining table. I think they have an extra small table to discourage you from actually dining up here. Or you can eat breakfast up here, I guess. But they want to encourage you to go to the restaurant to eat. So they don't give you a big table for food. <laughs> and the desk there. Here we have bedroom. Very nice. Another desk. And then on the other side, we have bathroom and a toilet. And that's basically every single hotel room, right? I mean, there's slight variations, but basically every single hotel room is lounge, bedroom, toilet. Ah, uh, this one's the same. The rooms at the end are a little bit different. Let me come in here, just to show you this one. So we have a lounge, right? We have table, same kind of sofas, TV, a desk, like same furnishing, slightly different shape. The toilet and bathroom is here. Oh, she's taking a nap in the bathroom. Never mind her. I should have gone to the one next door. <laughs> and then here we have the bedroom. This guy can't figure out where the bed is. Right, so a slightly different layout but pretty much the same thing. Every All the hotel rooms are the same. Also from this level we do have exits to the to the roof of the atrium. Right, The trees are down there if you remember. And this is the glass roof. We'll come back here later on. Just to point out that the uh, the roof lines up with this floor, and you can exit there. In here, what does that say? Red Admiral Lounge. There's a lot of lounges. Red Admiral Lounge doesn't have a bar, but somebody has ordered alcohol anyway. <laughs> there's a lot of lounges everywhere. Alright, so there's a lounge. And let's go upstairs again. Hey, what's up? What's up, bros? Up here, we have the penthouse queen. <laughs> the penthouse queen. So this is where the hotel room gets a little crazy, right? Brace yourself. What is the queen suite? Well, the queen suite starts off with a fancy fountain, right? Back here is a, a kitchen. The kitchen is this big. Why would a hotel room need a kitchen big enough to cook for like 20 people? The kitchen's big enough to cook for like 20 people at a time? Also, who's cooking? Are you cooking or the hotel staff cooking? I guess your hotel staff are cooking. All right, back out of the kitchen, into the main area. There's a lounge. And then there's dining. 
And then there's another lounge. <laughs> right? Are you keeping track? And then on the back corner here, we have bathroom. And this bath, I think this is a spa bath. The bath has electronic controls. A very fancy bath, right? Right. And then here, a piano. I mean, when's the last time you went into a hotel and had a piano in your, home, in your own hotel room? We have a lot of books. And then on the other side, we have more books. I guess this is kind of like a library because there's so many books, right? Oh, and then back here, we have a... An office with a computer. An office with a computer in your hotel room. <laughs> right, very cool. Going upstairs. <laughs> your hotel room has stairs on the inside. <laughs> and then you have a rooftop courtyard inside your hotel room. With a fountain! Right, very nice. Very luxurious. Look at the styling too, like modern but with Asian flavor. Right? Right. Oh, there's no... There's no, there's no Baroque, there's no Classical, there's no Colonialism at all. It's just modern Asian, look at that. So at the very heart of the... of the hotel. There's no colonialism. Ah, interesting. Well, maybe it's not about oppression. Maybe the colonialism is just the facade on the outside to make you think there's colonialism. Ah. Alright, through here, we have an indoor garden in a room, in your room. And then through here, this is... A bedroom. <laughs> a bedroom with a desk and a giant TV. And a lot of space on the floor. I don't know what you're supposed to do with all the space. You can run laps, I guess. You can run, like, run laps around here for exercise. <laughs> it's big enough for you to run laps. And then here you have a massive bathroom. Don't worry about those guys lying there, they're just taking a nap. Oh, look at that. A light, look at that. Cool, right? Very fancy. Very, very... Also very modern. Everything is just modern. There's no... There's no... Classical... Or Baroque... Or Colonial European architecture at all in here, right? A big ass bath. And then coming back out... Around your outdoor uh, interior courtyard, you have a hall of statues in your hotel room. And then here we have a bedroom, a second bedroom with ensuite inside your hotel room. Oh, look at this, look at this shower. Very fancy, right? Oh man, look at that shower. It's one of these showers that just dumps water on you like a waterfall, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> one of those. Right, so a bedroom with an ensuite, and then on the other side, we have another bedroom. <laughs> and then another ensuite. Alright, cool. Alright, understand? Understand. So the Queen Suite is a ginormous luxury three-bedroom apartment. <laughs> the whole three-bedroom apartment is your hotel room. Uh, this is like... This is satire, right? <laughs> this is satire, right? They're just kind of saying, alright, we're gonna have a luxury suite on the top two floors of this hotel. How luxurious can we make this luxury suite? And then they just went nuts. 
It's satire. I think it's satire. Because I don't think any real hotel does. Uh, maybe some of them do. Maybe like if you go to the president's suite in a, like a really expensive hotel, they do this. Just taking a quick look at the interior furnishing again. Yeah, everything's just modern. Modern Asian. Modernism with Asian motifs. Uh, no hints of European colonial colonialism at all. Yeah, turns out the colonialism is just the facade on the outside. Alright, so this is the, the right-hand block of the hotel. Let's go back out into the atrium and then get into the other block. Run, 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 run. So the other block is here. Look at that. Right there. Entries forbidden. So this is a staff area. I'm going to start with this. This is the basement access. Oh, look at that. All of a sudden, everything's dirty. <laughs> That's not very nice. I mean, I understand this is like a service area and storage area. But like, considering how clean and shiny the guest areas are, and then as soon as you go to the staff area, everything's just dirty. Uh, can you? You're not going to clean any of this? I guess nobody pays you to clean this part of the hotel. <laughs> It's not that they can't clean it, it's that they don't clean it. <laughs> okay, so before we go see the left-hand block, let's go down to the basement. First things first, we're gonna go this way. So there's like tunnels, and like boxes and stuff piled up, and there's like a storage room with stuff just thrown everywhere. Not particularly neatly. But through here, through this door, and then through more corridors, and then more corridors, and then another storage room, and then out here... Ah, we're back at the riverside, look at that, there's the uh, water ruin back there. So there's a service entry from the water side into the basement. I guess if you ever need to bring in any goods by boat, you would like drop them off here and then bring them in there. Um. Remember there was the the car entry or the truck entry at the back of the hotel and then there's the boat service entry at the side of the hotel. So if you need to bring things into the hotel without disrupting the guests, there are two ways to do it, by boat and by road. Alright, let's get back inside. Back through where we came. And then here, we have lockers, and like a staff room, I guess. Lockers and showers. I'm not sure there are enough lockers for the number of staff. Maybe there are. Not that many showers, though. You have to shower quick. So this is, I guess, important. Showers and lockers for the staff. Here we have the laundry. So I think this laundry is too small for a hotel, or maybe at least the uh, the laundry the machines are too small. The thing with hotels is they go through a lot of laundry, a lot of laundry. Every time they change your towels, they wash them. Every time they change your linens, they wash them. And some of these fancy hotels, they change your towels and linens every single day. <laughs> every day? They change all your towels and all your linens and wash all of them. And remember how big the queen's suite was? There's like three bedrooms and th and four toilets. There's three bedrooms and, and four bathrooms. And they just wash everything. So I think uh, they need like a lot more washing machines than this. Because <laughs> they just wash everything every single day in these fancy hotels. We have a linen room. I mean, this is a decent size, but maybe even this is not big enough, right? There, there are, there's a lot of linen, but considering like the size of the hotel and the number of rooms, and the fact that you put like three towels in every bathroom and then you wash every towel every single day, you need more towels than this. You need, <laughs> you need a crazy amount of towels 
in a hotel like this. Right, and then this side... This goes back out to the back of the hotel. Remember this? So if you need to bring stuff into the basement, you bring them down the stairs. Although, stairs is... Uh, you might want like an elevator or, the, or a ramp. Because if you have some heavy stuff, like, like you have all the stuff on pallets, right? You can't just lift the entire pallet and bring them down because there's a staircase, right? You have to like take each box off the pallet and bring them down one by one. So ideally you have like a ramp and then you can just like have a forklift, take the whole pallet and bring them in. It'd be more efficient that way. But anyway, that's like a real life thing. In a video game, you don't have to worry about that too much. Coming back around here... So this part is underneath the well, hello there, Mr. the left-hand block. It's through here though, through this tunnel, we go to the right-hand block. You have like tunnels and storage. And then you have more tunnels and like more storage. By the way. And then here, out this way, up the stairs, now we go back to the space behind the kitchen. Right, so the kitchen is like through there. That's the kitchen. So this is how you get ingredients to the kitchen without ever crossing paths with the guests, right? Uh, from the trucks and also from the boats. And this is kind of important because although you see a lot of fruit and a lot of wine, and that's okay if the guests see that, but if you bring in like raw meat and raw fish, you don't want that to go through the guest areas because you don't want them smelling it or seeing it. You don't want them seeing dead fish and dead dead animals. <laughs> so bringing that, bringing the meat into the kitchen, you would bring it through these tunnels and then straight into the kitchen and not through any of the guest areas, right? Okay, so this is the entire basement. Let's go back up. I mean, for gameplay reasons, it's kind of a useful too, because you can Wait sneak here. around without going through the areas upstairs. So for like the stealth gameplay purposes. Anyway, back to this block, where we were before. On the other door, we have the manager's office. Oh, look at that. The Manager's office is quite spacious, huh? Oh, look at that. Not very... fancy, but very large. With like a sitting area, and she's got her own wine. Well, she's got bottles of something. I'm not sure if that is wine or something else. So she's treating herself well, you know. She's not your slave or anything. <laughs> It's not, it's not colonial exploitation. <laughs> Here we have some rooms, but they're being fumigated. They're sealed off, so we can't access them in the game. But given that the entire bottom floor of this side of the building seems to be a staff area, those might be more service areas, although I'm not sure about that. Because we have fancy fountains here, right? Why would we have fancy fountains if it's a staff area? But if it's not a staff area, why is this walled off like this? And like, there's a little side door? Uh, I'm confused now. So, based on the fact that the doors are kind of guarded, and the entrance is a side door, it seems like all of this should be a staff area. And the guests don't come down here. But if that's the case, it's a little strange that you have fancy fountains in the staff area. Although there are holes in the floor, and I guess the, the guests can see down there. Like they can lean over the railings and see the fountains. Uh, you, I'm not sure what's going on here. It's a little strange. So on this side, we also have hotel rooms. I don't need to go through all of this again, right? So this is the same as the other side. So there's a bedroom there, there's a bathroom there. I'm not going to go through it in detail. Same with all the other rooms on this floor, except for this one. Everything okay? Good. 
so on the other side this was a lounge on this side we have a big security room all right with security cameras and whatnot I guess they need a security room somewhere is that a map of the hotel oh it kind of is not that you can see very much there that's useful though like somehow they they have a diagram of the whole hotel and yet it's not useful it's because of the of the projection like it's it's not useful <laughs> you can't tell what's going on like just a flat map would be much more useful actually All right, so that's hotel rooms down here. We're gonna go up again. Don't mind me. On this level, we have the hotel rooms again, hey. but we start to see things that are a bit messy up here. So in the game, on this side of the hotel, the whole block has been taken over by a famous musician. Well, not really famous, by a rich musician, and he's recording music in the hotel and the entire block is taken up by his staff so we come in here we see like people are hanging out in here and they're kind of just his people his musician people and they're they've got a lot of food making a mess and so uh, most of this floor is pretty messy Like here, I like, you know look at these guys, they're just watching I TV. My manager. <laughs> and then in this room, Holly Blue Lounge. Oh, the other side is a red admiral, right? Holly Blue Lounge. So who's oh. A happy twenty seventh birthday. They've got a birthday party set up with a birthday cake. It's not my birthday though, so they've kind of just put <laughs> confetti and streamers everywhere. Right, they've converted this lounge into a birthday party. And then let's go upstairs. So now this is the uh, the penthouse emperor's suite. So the other side is the queen, this side is the emperor. Let's come back here first. The kitchen is here, right? Same kitchen as the other side, except this one is full of food and is actively being used. And then coming in here, there's the food being eaten. And you can hear the music being recorded, so they turned the entire lounge area into a recording studio. Right. Basically just move the whole lot of furniture in here. And similarly, they put all this stuff in all the other spaces as well. They kind of shoved all the, the chairs back here. <laughs> and to put all the music equipment in the main space. In here, bathroom, same thing except messy. So the whole suite is just the same thing except messier. There's not too much for me to say about it because it's just identical to the other side, right? We have the office, we have the library, and then upstairs is pretty much the same thing. Interior courtyard again. Right. And then interior garden again. Uh, and then we have the bedroom again. Oh man, they're just trashing everything, aren't they? Wild. Right, bedroom again. Giant bathroom. What? Why is the bathroom so big? What would you do in this space? <laughs> if you had a bathroom this big, what do you actually do in all this space? 
What would you do here that you couldn't do in a space half the size? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> what are you gonna do in all like run laps? <laughs> Why is the bathroom so big? Alright, we have more food up here. The same statues. And then the same thing. We have a bedroom. And then an ensuite and the same on the other side. We don't need to see this again. So the same thing, but it's been messed up. Alright, let me think. Is that the whole hotel? Yeah. So that's the entire Himapan Hotel. Let me uh, get up onto the glass roof of the atrium and then have some final words. Let me just think, did I miss anything? No. No, that's everything. back here, looking at the temple across the river. Alright, what do I have to say at the very end? So that's the Himapan Hotel in Bangkok, Thailand. Kind of. Like, the real Bangkok is right here. And then in the game, we're in the jungle somewhere. I wonder why they chose to do that. In a way, it's much easier. Because modeling the whole city accurately is quite difficult. It's a lot of work. So by putting it in a jungle, you, the trees are easy because nobody recognizes individual trees, right? Whereas people do recognize individual buildings. Um. Hmm. Like they wanna. They want the idea of a fancy hotel in Bangkok. And I guess a fancy hotel in Bangkok would be a resort out of the city. Like, you wouldn't have a fancy resort in the middle of the city, right? So, they kind of like force two things together, like a, a luxury resort on the outskirts of the city. And then this Watarun landmark, and it just took two iconic tie things and just jam them together. Even though it doesn't make any sense to jam them together. They just jammed them together and they made this game level. <laughs> okay. Uh, the architecture... Uh, there's some strange story going on here, right? I'm not sure if I really figured it out. But it looks like a Thai person has built colonial, French colonial architecture, a hotel with, in, in French colonial style, the hotel serves Western guests. They have Thai staff serving Western guests. So they're kind of playing into the whole colonial stereotype. But Thailand was never actually colonized. And also in the middle of the hotel is a Buddha statue. Not any European colonial thing, but a local thing, right? And then once you get past the, the facade, all the inside is just modernism, right? There's no colonial motifs on the inside. So it's like, you know, you kind of put on a, a colonial facade, but you're not actually... You're not thoroughly colonial, but you're not colonial at all on the inside. I wonder if I'm making too much of that? If I'm like kind of making a mountain out of a molehill. But it feels too deliberate not to be there. Because why would there be a Buddha statue in the middle of the hotel otherwise? Right? And this is something I mean look, I'm from Hong Kong, right? I'm Chinese, I'm from Hong Kong. And Hong Kong people do this too. Like I I was when I was born in Hong Kong, it was still it was still British territory. And the Hong Kong people, like, they would put their own little symbols into the the colonial spaces. Just to, like, have a bit of themselves in the foreign place, if that makes sense. And Hong Kong, you'll be like a... 
you know, like traditionally China has ancestor worship. Like we, I mean, it's not really ancestor worship, but we like we would have a little shrine to our ancestors, and then we would like we pray to them. We don't think they have special powers or gods or anything. It's just kind of more like a remembrance thing, right? Like we have a little memorial for our ancestors. It's not like we think they have special powers or their deities or anything. So we keep memorials to our ancestors, and like we put those in in our buildings, and then we have like our local deities, and we have put little shrines of them. And in a way, when I see like a Buddha statue here, it feels like that. It's like a a shrine of something that the local people value, and it's right in the middle. It's right in the middle of the hotel. <laughs> cool. <laughs> like. You know, that, that's on purpose, because the, the game designers put that in on purpose. They thought about it, and they put it in on purpose. So, and you know, anyone who knows enough architecture to make this understands the implications of European-style architecture in Thailand. Like, do, do you understand what that means? All the politics behind it. There's no way somebody doesn't understand any of that and just made this, right? So, no, no I don't think I'm making too much of it. I think I think it's I think they're making a point here. Um so architecturally the uh the interior is just modern and I guess you know people prefer that. If it's too if there's too much baroque, I think people would be more put off. Or, you know, like, modern people would be more put off by that. They, they, they wouldn't be sure if they're allowed to touch things. <laughs> if it looks like they're antiques, they'd be like, oh, am I allowed to touch this? Am I allowed to sit on this antique chair, or is this too expensive? Um, the exterior is... Oh, I, I mentioned the copy and paste before, right? So it looks fancy. It looks like... A lot of money... And effort has gone into, like, all this ornamentation. But actually, it's just the same thing copied over and over again. And could it could be that it's actually quite cheap. It could be just mass-produced. Can you imagine mass-produced French colonial architecture? <laughs> but it's, it is kind of like that, because it's just kind of the same thing over and over again. It's, uh, it's, a, little, it's a little odd. Like, everything looks... Like, if you just look at it quickly and briefly, you, you think you understand it. But if you really analyze it in detail, there's a lot of little odd bits in it, in in the architecture here. And uh, perhaps the best part is the, uh, is the way the there's a few like Thai motifs incorporated into this architecture. So the the fusion is very interesting. Oh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but there's like white eaves. Look at that. So you see that the the eaves stick out from the walls. So you don't have that in actual European architecture. But in the tropics, that's quite important because it rains a lot in the tropics, and so you really want wider eaves to keep the rain off off the uh, the, the, the facade. So that's like a, a relatively common adaptation, even to colonial architecture. So when the Europeans come to tropical places and they, they colonize the place, and they build their architecture in, in tropical places, like, pretty quickly they figure out, you know what, it rains so much. It rains so much here. And they start putting white eaves on it because it just makes sense, right? So it's interesting, like, little details like that and how colonial architecture changes to adapt to local conditions. That's an interesting study in architecture. But uh, I won't go too much into detail about that here. Uh, I think that's all I have to say about... Uh, the Himapan Hotel. Let's go ahead and assassinate our targets real quick. We have to eliminate Jordan Cross and Ken Morgan, if I remember right. Oh, there he is. And there's Ken Morgan. And then... Oh, there's Jordan Cross. Alright, mission complete. Easy peasy. Uh, let's get out of here before anybody... It's suspicious about me being here amongst the dead bodies. So I'm gonna run back out to the riverside and we're gonna leave by boat, right? Because that's the intended way. 
uh, in the next video, we are going to... Oh man, they set, they set the alarm off. Alright, everybody, panic, panic! In the next video, we're going to Colorado, USA. We are going to a farm out in the middle of nowhere in Colorado. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll talk yeah, about it when we get there. Alright, see you in the next video. Uh, one last look. That's a very nice... What? Alright, let's get out of here. See you next time.